After some time and another wedding season, I celebrated my birthday, went on a vacation, got a new glasses and now I'm back on YouTube. And I've got a long overdue video for you today, a review of my Fujifilm XT30 Mark II camera. I purchased it last December and now that it's already fall again, so I've had a lot of time to put it to the test and make conclusion about whether it's a good camera. Before buying I also debated between this camera and the Fujifilm X-E4 and you can check out this video up here if you're interested. So today I'm also gonna answer the question whether I regret choosing X-T30 Mark II over X-E4 or not, since Fuji X-E4 got discontinued. So if you're thinking about getting the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II or Fujifilm camera in general, General, stick around for this review. If you find the information in this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. Now let's dive right in. Let's start with the obvious thing, the design. I think it would be fair to say that Fujifilm did a great job with their camera designs. In my opinion, all Fujifilm cameras, not only X-T30 Mark II, looks really good. Retrish, I would say, and it is like a breath of clean air when almost everyone around is trying to create the most modern looking cameras they can, but Fujifilm went the other way and I think it's a good thing. In my case, I have the black version of X-T30 Mark II, because for me black suits this camera way better. The silver colorway, in my opinion, looks best on bigger cameras. Also this way it's more discreet as a street photography camera. Basically it's a miniature version of X-T3 which makes sense hence the names. This camera has lots of control points. You have a dial for fast shooting mode change, shutter speed dial, exposure compensation dial, customizable dials with button function on front and back of the camera, auto switch and so on. Control wise I don't feel any limitation with this camera. The camera provides everything I need to operate smoothly. Now if I compare this X-T30 Mark II to X100V for example, I must admit that X100 cameras looks better. It's more sleek, but main thing that proportions and the placement of the elements on the X100 cameras are well thought out. In my case, X-T30 Mark II is more symmetrical, where the lens placement feels more centered as opposed on X100 cameras. But what is good about Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II design is that you get a slight front and thumb grips. For me, and I'm a tall guy with not so small hands, the grips on this camera are perfectly fine to be able to hold it with one hand without being afraid to drop it. The only downside in the design of X-T30 Mark II is the main screen as it looks a bit bulky and could be a bit thinner and bigger with smaller bezels around. And also I almost forgot the play button is on the left side of the camera and it is so wrong. With play button placed on the left side it makes it almost impossible to operate the camera with one hand and so I had to program a fan button on the top right to act as play button. Now let's see what we have here spec-wise. X-T30 Mark II has 26 megapixels APS-C crop sensor, X processor 4, it has electronic viewfinder, it can shoot 4K 30fps and full HD up to 120 frames per second. Then there is USB-C, micro HDMI ports, microphone jack, one cut slot and so on. The image quality is great, I have to emphasize that. Despite having an APS-C crop sensor, it performs exceptionally well. My previous APS-C camera was the Canon 600D and I recall it struggling in low light conditions compared to this compact Fujifilm. I even put it up against the Canon 5D Mark III and the Canon only had a slight edge in low light, which is quite impressive for Fujifilm APS-C sensor. It's a shame Fujifilm doesn't make full frame cameras. I'd seriously consider switching from my Sony for wedding photography. The ability to recover information from raw images is amazing. You can underexpose and almost every time you will be able to recover information from the shadows. Battery life is also great. Shooting images one battery is plenty to shoot for the whole day. Although if you are going to shoot some videos, it might drain your battery way faster. I have 3 batteries in total and never managed to drain more than 2 in one day. Now let's talk about film simulations. 
Fujifilm has done something truly ingenious here. They're not your typical portrait or landscape picture profiles. Instead, Fujifilm draws on its heritage in film photography to integrate this film look seamlessly into their modern cameras. When shooting with a Fujifilm digital camera, it feels like using a film camera. You get stylized shots with a vintage and nostalgic feel. What's even better is that with Fujifilm and these film simulations, you can set your preferred style and shoot in JPEG format, skipping the need for post-production on RAW files. You can make this film simulation adjustments right in the camera, shoot in JPEG and then post your images immediately. This saves a significant amount of time and encourages more shooting. For instance, I often shoot in JPEG, transfer a few images that I like to my iPhone, make minor adjustments in the Photos app and share them right away. It's much quicker than shooting RAW with my Sony camera. The only downside in this workflow is Fujifilm app on iPhone, which often struggles to connect to the camera. To make it short, the camera is pretty capable by today's standards, not only for casual use. And now I'd like to discuss who, in my opinion, would benefit most from this camera. First, it's important to clarify that this camera isn't designed for professional work, such as studio work or weddings, for example. Even if you work professionally in fields like street or landscape photography, where high-end equipment is often preferred, you might lean towards a different camera that offers more advanced features. However, considering its compact size, this camera can serve as an excellent backup for professionals. I've taken it as a backup to longer weddings a few times this year, which was great. The camera didn't took much space in the back and I knew that if my main cameras would break, I would be able to finish shooting wedding with Fujifilm and get decent results. But where it truly excels is in casual use. With this camera I often do something I never did with my work cameras. I put my Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II into auto mode. I can't say whether light meters in cameras have improved significantly over the last decade or if I simply didn't know how to utilize them back in the day with my first camera. However, I now enjoy the freedom of occasionally using auto mode on the X-T30 Mark II, completely forgetting about camera settings and relying on the exposure compensation dial only. This approach lets me enjoy casual photography without the stress of adjusting settings and potentially missing a moment. The exposure compensation dial functions flawlessly and speeds up the shooting process. Combine that with shooting in JPEG, eliminating the need for post-processing and you have, in my opinion, the perfect stress-free camera. Furthermore, this camera is fantastic for families. I used to refrain from using my work Sony a7 III to capture family photos due to the hassle it involved. You had to select the right lens, take the shots and remember to transfer images from the camera before the next shoot. It's a relief to have a small spare camera that can sit in the living room at all times with the memory cards inside. You can simply grab it, snap a photo when the mood strikes and return it to the shelf without worrying about transferring images because you won't need it for a paid shoot tomorrow. In my view, every family should consider having a compact camera like this. We've become so used to snapping numerous pictures with our smartphones, cluttering our devices and rarely transferring images to computers or printing them. However, using a dedicated camera can make the experience more special. When the time comes to review all the images you've captured, it's a much more enjoyable process than sifting through a crowded smartphone gallery, desperately searching for images to delete because your storage is running low. Yet again. Lastly, do I regret choosing the X-T30 Mark II over the X-E4 camera? In short, no. While we could debate the design of both cameras endlessly, in my opinion, both cameras look fantastic. Personal preference vary, with some favoring the X-T30 Mark II and the others X-E4, and that's perfectly fine. However, I didn't select a camera just to serve as a decoration on a shelf, so design alone couldn't be my sole consideration. In terms of image quality, both cameras are ideal identical because they share the same sensor and processor. The primary difference lies in their design and ergonomics. When you compare the ergonomics of X-T30 Mark II and X-E4, you'll notice that the X-E4 lacks grips entirely, 
while the XT30 offers grips on both the front and back. Additionally, the XT30 Mark II features extra control dials and a built-in flash. The XE4, on the other hand, compensates with a flip-up screen. Please correct me if I missed anything else. Ultimately, the decision comes down to what matters most to you. Is it a slicker design with rangefinder aesthetics and a flip-up screen? Or do you prioritize better grips, additional control dials and built-in flash? Some were willing to sacrifice control dials in favor of the rangefinder design, but many of those individuals ended up purchasing additional grips, which meant overspending and compromising the slick look of the XE4 cameras. While they may argue that they still appreciate the appearance with added grips, let's be honest. If you like the way XE4 looks with additional grips, you could have simply opted for the XE3, which isn't significantly worse. Of course, it's worth noting that the Fujifilm XE4 has been discontinued, leaving the XT30 Mark II as the sole option if you're seeking a new camera. However, if you still believe the XE4 would better suit your needs, you'll have to explore the used market to find one. As we approach the end of 2023, the question is, should you still consider buying the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II? It's a somewhat tricky question, and here's why. The straightforward answer is yes, absolutely. If you're considering it, go ahead and make the purchase without hesitation. However, your decision might hinge on how much of a camera enthusiast you consider yourself to be. If, for instance, you are a professional photographer like myself and you desire top-notch performance even for casual shooting, the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II is an excellent choice. It offers a great balance of features and quality. On the other hand, if you are a beginner in photography, it's a hobby for you or you are working with a limited budget, don't shy away from exploring all the models like the X-T30 or even X-T20. The same goes for the X-E line. Take a look at the used camera market, and you may find well-maintained cameras at more affordable prices. In many cases, you won't even notice the absence of certain features, such as having one less film simulation option, for example. With the money you save, you could invest in additional lenses or other accessories to further enhance your photography experience. In the end, remember that it's not just about the gear we use, it's about how we use the gear we have. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have any questions or corrections, please feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to catch my future videos, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. But for now, have a nice day and keep shooting!